What's up, man? You can add it, but you have to pay. Oh, when I when I I talk to support, um, it's fifteen dollars a month to stream on Facebook, and there's something about uh, I don't remember. <laughs> Sorry, say again. I've been good. Getting my ass ass handed to me in <laughs> icons. Yeah, I, I thought I'd hop on right now while we're doing this. I just ended up against some dude that's like full skinned out, <laughs> paid hero. First time I've seen this hero. Like, oh my god. He ain't paying to win Wonder. today, though. Oh, now you guys should be able to hear me. People are like, you sound different, Anthony. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I forgot to unmute myself. I have like multiple places where I have to unmute myself. Thank you guys for letting me know right now. It's like, AJ, your voice is, sounds real different and it's like out of sync. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think our voices are even that close. Yeah, I know. So it just sounded like you're just talking to yourself. There's a little bit of delay, so I'm sure most of you guys that can't hear me just yet who are commenting. Mute life? You guys should be able to hear me now. As, as that's sorted out, I'm going to go ahead and... There you go. Yeah, see, Reed can hear me now. Just double checking. Yeah, I uh, have two places where I have to unmute myself, and so it's okay. Like, I'm getting in the swing of things. When I used to do my mentorship... Uh, I mean, what used to well in the past when I did my mentorships I would always like periodically forget recording and that was a bit 
That was big. Yeah. Uh, but now I almost never forget. Knock on wood. Because <laughs> it's like part of the ritual, right? So I just got to build that ritual up with this, and I think I should be good. I just beat the this pay to win and fool. I don't think you can pay to win, though. <laughs> and you can get more skins. Pay to look cooler than me. And catch these hands. Yeah, the they gotta work on that because that, that can turn a lot of people off. Which is the, um, the there's no like appropriate uh, system in place where people play against people that are of their caliber. Yeah, there's no it, MMR. Yeah, because in one game I was playing, I was just like mopping up full, right? And I was like, this guy uh, clearly has never played Smash. Or like, he's probably one of those people that they're good at Smash. He's playing on mobile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm just like, no, dude. And I'm like, not even good. But like, I know what that is. Like, I am, um, I'm a decent mm -hmm. Smash player, right? I'm a decent one. Um, yeah. But uh, I wouldn't say I could keep up with like the pros, obviously. But I can beat your average person who says they're pretty good at the game and then uh but then i was like you know i was winning and i was like yeah that's about right and then and then um <laughs> the next match and this is how i know i'm gonna get my my ass whooped in that game i can almost yeah. know before i even get into the match you may, maybe you've noticed this it's very nuanced yeah. it's the meta it's like you know how you have time to select your character mm -hmm. and you have to click ready to play whatever like, if I'm ready before the other person and it takes them, like, 30 seconds to decide, then I know I'm going to whoop their ass. Like, we have to think about it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, who, who, who am I going yeah, to use? They, they don't know what's going on, dude. They don't know what's pulls. going on. Yeah, they, they're just figuring it out. And I'm like, oh, yeah, they're going to get wrecked. And then so, but then, like, if I'm the person, like, even if it's, like, the millisecond, right? Like, like I click on the, the, get like, the quick match. And then it takes me in, and then I'm like, okay, like I got this character great, and then I go to ready, and it's like locks me into the game. I'm like, uh oh, like did they they already selected their character like literally in milliseconds? Like that's some like next level like confidence. And so yeah, that then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get wrecked, and that's what happened. <laughs> and I, I predicted it too. I was like, uh oh, like this person like already knew like what character they're gonna play, and so then um, yeah, they they are like juggled me like the first two deaths i uh, had uh they had zero percent damage on them oh, it's like, uh, that's bad that's just like but it's not fun like, uh, man yeah it's, not yeah, it's defeating yeah. Yeah, i'm done <laughs> yeah they gotta like i don't mind losing if it's like close you know a good fight yeah yeah, yeah there's just... definitely i've been i've been in a couple games where the dudes are just like comboing you to the point where you can't like do anything you can't uh defend uh, my friend uh, that I grew up with is we call him Dewey. He's really, really good at Smash uh, to the point where he's competed in the tournament here and there. Oh wow! And he he was always the guy that like wins every time we played Smash growing up. And I was like trying to get him to play the game. So yesterday I was like uh, I was just chilling, and he messaged me. He's like, "All right, man, let's check it out." And so I played with him. I kicked his ass maybe the first three games, and then we spent the next 30 games having me get destroyed. Because <laughs> he figured it out. He was like, oh, yeah, this is it, kind of a mix between this character and this character. Thing. Yeah, he was like, he was like, so good. <laughs> he didn't even know. He like, picked it up real quick as all, well, you know? Yeah, I am. Um, that's how it was for me. It took me like three matches and uh, I figured it out. Yeah. I, I just, I don't know, there's something really appealing about it. I even like the art style, because I was like, I'm into the Overwatch art style, and this is like Smash with a little Overwatch style to it. There's some things I don't like about the game already, but it's alpha, so I'm just, you know. Well, you know, Kaylin, you can just tell them. Chilling. And they're, they're looking for feedback, yeah. too, so it's not like they're just sitting around saying, oh, which is, right, which is well, great. it's your opinion. You know, they're, they're, trying to, they're, they're trying to capitalize on this opportunity to get the feedback yeah. that they need. Like there's, there's some systems I really like, some I wish were changed. Um, one in particular is like when you do over B, uh, attack it doesn't automatically grab the ledge when I feel like it should like it should cancel my animation and because uh, that I mean if that's the difference between saving me and not like like yeah. I, I'm at the edge grab it you know yeah it's, um, uh, we were talking about like Kalen yeah. was saying like and for those of you who are just joining and have no idea what we're talking about um, a game that Kalen Chalk uh, is a part of uh, he's working on um, it's called Icons you guys should check it out it's free Icons Combat Arena. Yeah, I think if you just type in icons, you'll see it. 
Um, yeah. And it's it's really fun. It's pretty cool. It's it's basically trying to kind of take up that competitive space of Smash, right? Like mostly the the space for Smash is is left pretty uh, untouched. You know, it's it's a community driven thing. And so they're going to try to take that space and, and not just be a community-driven thing, but like a company-driven thing as well as a community. And so they're trying to get up on that. And uh, the game is out for people to play and, and try out and give feedback to. It's pretty stable too, yeah. if you ask me. Like yeah. the thing that I uh, I was critiquing with them uh, was specifically that polish. But Kalen is aware of this. Because like... The... Okay, go ahead. Well, it's just like polish. Like the things that you're talking about is like polish stuff. And oh, yeah. in my opinion, like that's the kind of like the type of polish that I generally try to get uh, when I was working on my own games, right? Yeah. It's like the feel, right? Yeah, I want it's it like, to feel. I expect a thing. Yeah, and I, want to and do I, that I think that's incredibly valid uh, criticism that you you were coming to. Uh, Will I think was coming to this conclusion. I'm sure other people were too. And mm -hmm. some a lot of people like that were reviewing the game. I don't think were as articulate. You know, they just say I don't feel it. You know, yeah. But that's what it is. It's like it's it's really subtle. It can't be like it can't just move and kick and and all that stuff. It has a lot to do with like even the sound. Like I remember when I was like doing sound design for uh, I Can Jump, like, the latest project that I'm working on. Like I spent a lot of time like making it feel good. Like when you landed on stuff, and I might have done it too much because people were like, oh, "Dude, that <laughs> it's like real, real." Uh, loud and satisfying maybe too much yeah. and so i'm like okay yeah i can tone it back but like it when you land on something it feels legit and i spent a good amount of time on that like on the sound because it just wasn't feeling like it didn't have that crunch and that's something that i think like if you look at really good games that do this like overwatch has that like real good crunch like blizzard really gets that idea of like nailing crunch disney does too i was playing like the the not Disney, I'm sorry, Nintendo. Um, if you play, like, Mario game on, like, the phone, like, just play it. It's free, too, I think, up until... Yeah, it's right? Yeah. Like, it has, like, a... Like, a, a level of, like, incredible polish whenever you do anything in that game. You know, that makes it feel really uh, rewarding and, and tactile, you know? And I think that's a lot of what's missing out of uh, uh, icons at the moment. Because it, what, it, what it does is it makes you feel slower. It makes you feel um, like things don't react at the moment that you expect them to react, right? Yeah. Uh, a good example of this is like in Halo, they used to have like four or five animation frames for like the hit, the melee hit. Mm -hmm. I think it was longer actually uh, from what I remember watching. They were talking about this. Like it was like... They talked it about been, it like, in uh, the development of Destiny. Yeah, maybe. They uh, I that. I see, yeah, I watched a stream on it for the animation team and how they how they handled their animations and how they ended up with the satisfying melee with the gun systems they had. And they referenced Halo's uh, melee. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen that. Is that what you're I referencing? Have, I have not. Uh, they were they're actually, the one that I watched was they were directly referring to Halo. Halo? Okay. Yeah. But yeah, we've talked about it here and there. Go ahead. Um, it's interesting. Hold on just a second. Thanks to you, I can build a decent robot illustration. So many thanks. Your streaming partner having have a art station, Behance or Instagram? Not sure what that means. I'm streaming. I'm not streaming through art station now. Do they still have that? Do you know? I don't know. If they do. uh, no, they removed that because it wasn't getting enough uh, yeah, it's, users. Is yeah. what is what uh, Leo said. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. Like, and they're just like, what? Oh, we're just trying to make. Um, we're just trying to make the platform Portfolio good, site. yeah. And so they yeah. can't use all the resources in every little thing. They're trying stuff out. I think I think it's just like it's just art streaming as a whole didn't take off. Um, so and they were they were like testing the waters with it because all it really was was an integration of Twitch uh, with the hashtag, and so they removed that integration because it was muddying up the page. They felt and people and they have all the the metrics and data to prove mm -hmm. that people aren't clicking that tab and using it. So. Yeah, they just removed it. What they should have done is reached out to people like me uh, and people that are incredibly popular to stream more often on there. Lee, if you're yeah. ever listening to this, I'm always around, man. I'm always willing to help you guys out. I think our station's great. Yeah, I think it just needs in proper incentive. Yeah. 
Because people are here mainly because they are on, they, they follow me on YouTube and stuff, and I'll be more than happy to stream almost exclusively on, on Facebook, or not Facebook, on uh, Art Station. I don't see a problem there. Yeah. But, but there would have to be uh, incentives. But anyway. That's, a, that's like a email conversation. <laughs> yeah. What's the name yeah. of the game again? Someone asked. We, we already answered that. Um, but yeah. Uh, so the thing with Halo, right? So like, just to finish that thought, they they basically, yeah, they realized like having so many frames of animation just made it feel so slow, right? Even though like it looks nicer, does it make sense? Like it looked really nice when you like landed a hit, right? But it just felt like you didn't hit anybody because the animations took too long. So they kept on reducing it, and they ended up reducing it to like three frames of animation. And they got rid of all the lead up animation. Basically, as soon as you hit the melee button, you're already in like the hit position. Does that right. make sense? Right, they, they use the rest of the animation for the for the um, pullback. Yeah, so that way. It was very, very quick. Yeah, and if you look at games like Call of Duty, they get this, they get this really well. Like they understand like the power of like crunch. Right, I like to, to, to think of it as crunch because that's what it feels like. It's like really crunchy. Is that, a, is that an animation term? Uh, no, no, I'm just saying in general, like in game feeling like I, I was just using the the halo as an example of like how they were really trying to capitalize uh, Capitalize on crunch like the feeling of just like pop and So for instance, like when you do like a design uh, and concept art to parallel this uh, For those of you who know more more or less about art It's like adding like the details or like adding the chromatic aberration or the color correction on Instagram uh, adding a lot more contrast to your designs like that's what amplifies your your drawings a little further right and so with game like feel it's like very similar you need like elements that will make your game feel really like crunchy and so like call of duty like when you shoot somebody like literally literally money flies out of their body right and the sound that it makes sounds real nice like it sounds like you really got them you know yeah, and uh, it was, there's like no doubt. It's it's incredibly arcadey, and I think a lot of games uh, that used to be really arcadey just like capitalize on this, but a lot of games don't do it because they try to avoid that like cartoony feel of their game. And uh, I think that's that's a sad thing. Actually, I think there's some some beauty in that. I guess most people assume that it's kind of just cheap parlor tricks. But like, if you look at like uh, Hearthstone, Hearthstone does it. Hearthstone's like all over the place with that kind of like everything just like crunches, you know. And Is this... Michael playing right now? I hear sticks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> playing some <laughs> icons. Yeah. <laughs> can you hear the sticks? I just stopped so I can like draw. So I was like, I was playing Ooh. too much. Did you see that they gave you uh they gave you like some money, some Spectre to go buy stuff? No, I didn't. What? Look, no, I'm in the upper right hand corner after. Uh, you notice that they yeah, gave. After this match, I'll check it out. Wait, what? Yeah, they give you 1,100. Yeah, in game currency? Oh, hell yeah, dude. Did you give me some money? Everyone everyone got it. Everyone got it today. Oh, I'm not oh, special? Sick. Well, I, I mean, you that. are special in a sense, but like. <laughs> I don't you know, want it now. Special <laughs> after, bad all, after all the controversy of like people not liking the way things were, we're like, all right, we're working on it. In the meantime, we're all going to give everybody like some free money. That's nice. Oh, that's why well, see everybody's yeah. dressed up. Cause I played a guy who was totally a scrub and he was dressed, he was decked out. And I was yeah, like, I just saw somebody with a <laughs> the hell are you doing and, like, here? The top skin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we announced we announced it on Twitter, but we don't have like the you know when you sign on the game, it's like check yeah, it out. Yeah, in game like, pop up. Can you can you use that money to to get characters? Yeah. Yeah. Can I buy so a character? One thousand oh. can, can can buy you one at least one character. Oh hell yeah! That's yeah. sick. Okay. Now I'm happy. So you can um, buy one character or buy a bunch of like emotes and stuff like that. Yeah, I already person, have all the characters, so I, I bought wasted, a bunch of like tons and shit. That person wasted his money buying that skin because he got shredded. Yeah, he's a scrub. He's trash. <laughs> yeah, let <laughs> me use it. Yeah, let me see what's up here. <laughs> Momentary <laughs> break, y'all, from this painting. I'm gonna check out uh, some one of the things. Things. You're gonna show off your skills. Oh, you want one? I bet Anthony's favorite color is gray. It's actually orangish red. Do you use? Oh, did you just assume his color? Yeah. What's your uh, HSB? Hold on, hold on. What's your HSB? Yeah, what's your HSB? What's your HSB? Audio. How do I change this audio settings? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah I forgot. Yeah. And Facebook people said they couldn't hear you. 
No, yeah, that, that oh, was really? in the beginning. That was probably early. Oh, okay, never mind. Fix that. Right. Yeah, I'll turn that um, One of the things I was meaning to ask you about is any uh, changes to the. Oh, to yeah, 1100. The, um, the loot box system. Because yeah, I think so I'm level eight or nine right. now, and I, I only had five Spectra. <laughs> I feel like that. I don't know if that's. Like, we're, makes we're, sense. we're working on it. We're working on it. Okay, that's all. <laughs> so, while we're working on it, we're giving you guys like free. Right. Pretty much, you're like, okay, yeah, yeah. We're which character? Which character plays the most like Duck Hunt? <laughs> play, uh, Rain Rain. You should a... play. You should play Wei Shan, AJ. You should buy Wei Shan. You could buy a character. I'd buy Wei Shan. Nah. I only want. I only want Raymer. Raymer or whatever, because his uh, voice actor. Actually, if you go to Alpha Gala, you can see my skin that I made. That's like really popular. Is the is the vacation skin? That shit goes hard as hell. Oh, you you worked on that one of those? I'm gonna play one. Yeah, it's the only skin I've ever done before. My very first skin. It's like it's like a Hawaii vacation skin. So I was like, so I want to do like Hawaii style. I'm waiting ten seconds for matchmaking. This is some garbage. (laughs) Did I play Michael? Did you play Michael? This game is complete and other garbage. I'll, I'll, I'll screw you up right now. Ooh, what? Uh, child late. friendly, child friendly talking. content. Michael's talking about you're, you're a whoop his behind. I was telling Michael that I can determine if I'm gonna win a match by how long it takes the other player to lock in. Yeah, this guy's probably this guy's probably like medium tier because it took him ten seconds. He's medium tier. <laughs> <laughs> if it takes you more than twenty seconds, you're gonna get owned. I'm gonna own you. <laughs> so he's he's probably gonna be my match. He's oh, uh, oh you know, no! I was wrong. He's more than medium tier. Data. Is there any any uh, stats on like win rate and stuff yet? Like uh, I know it's not available oh, for yeah. the player, have, but you have that of like who's winning and stuff like that. We haven't done ranked yet, but we do have like a, a elo system essentially. So like it pairs you against people Bro. that are your your skill oh, level. We do have elos. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, this guy shredded me. Like it pairs you against people that like you're not gonna get paired against like the top ten people. Like it'll rarely ever happen. I had a couple matches where the like, dude just fucking mopped me. Yeah. You might, oh, damn. AJ's getting slimy. Yeah, right yeah. this guy is more than medium tier. I was wrong. <laughs> he said he was medium tier. He, he, he knows the meta, dude. He knows to take a little bit longer. Hey, look at this guy <laughs> dashing, man. Dude, you run. You no, got a block, bro. We're, we're a little delayed, too, so uh, yeah. <laughs> we're watching your previous ass. Oh, maybe you can see the frame rate issue that I have. It stutters a lot. Like, that's not the stream. Oh, really? Yeah, mine stutters a lot. What, what? You have a uh, 80, right? It looks, it looks fine on your stream. Oh, well, then maybe not. Maybe I'm just dummy. I mean, I'm well, playing for You didn't see that freeze right frame drop? Yeah. I see some frames, bro. I mean, I'm watching it right now. I, don't, I haven't seen anything yet. Get Ooh, the hell get off the this. Hell. Okay, it kind, of, it kind of froze right there for a second. But... Oh, no! Nice. That was sick. Moves, dude. Oh. 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 What the? Oh jeez, I'm done for. Run, run. <laughs> oh, no. uh, yeah, the thing about Zerong is that once he throws you up in the air, it's like it's like you're gonna hit like three times. It's some, yeah. it's kind of BS. I'm gonna control Oh down. what the? Oh dude, he's gonna three stock me. Oh no, oh no. It's alright. After this oh. one, they'll be like, oh, okay, I just saw that from Lion. You gotta get at least one kill. Oh, I can get it. Can you? Can you? Oh no, I can't. <laughs> oh, I'm dead. If you want to 1v1 me, I'm on. Get out of here. Yeah, you, guys, you guys should just play each other for now. Otherwise, you can play. Yeah, it freezes up a lot, man. But I don't, I don't blame you guys for that entirely. I'm creating a lot. It, it could be, it could be some of the night code stuff. I'm not sure. It could, it, it could also what be the. the oh. This is a lobby, robot pencil, password one, two, three, four. <laughs> what do you guys do? Like best out of three? Best out of three? No, I'm not gonna play too much, I gotta paint. Yeah. Play him play him play him one game. Play him one oh we're getting poked. <laughs> play Michael one game. That, oh, the uh, kid players Sucker. are the ones that are getting the emotional. The good ones, because they're just so fast. Yeah, uh, if you play a Shawnee, then I just do down B. That usually stops them, because they'll, they'll run into it, and then you can punish them for it. So. Yeah. That's, oh, that's Kalen, I, I ended up playing uh, playing my friend Dewey, and uh, I, I won maybe the first like, three matches, and What's then up? the next 30 he mopped me <laughs> every I'm game. Adapted to this I'm going to Blast Squirrel, Get out of here. Come back. 
<laughs> he said, come back. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Dude, is AJ sponsored, dude? Oh, what the? But I'm a fast learner. Oh, oh it is sponsored, dude. Almost got him, almost got him back. Almost clap back. Oh, I just saw on the stream. So when Kid does his up B, which is whatever that attack is, um, I blocked that. He hit the he hit the uh, edge and of the stage and kept going onto the stage. My friend Dewey said he he rather grabbed the ledge. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, there's there's a little bit. There's not very many kid back. players at my at, at my at work, so what's going on here? I deal with I deal with like Zuron and playing, Aki Malu animation. I got it. Join up, man. I am in here. Yeah, you don't, dude. Why are you getting so cocky right now, man? I don't see you in here. I only see me. Look at the stream. He's right in there. Yeah. I see. What the heck? Yeah, in the stream, but I can't start the match, and I only see me. Oh. We'll just restart it again. Okay. That's weird. Yeah, I'll jump. Okay. I'll jump back in again. again. No, no, I'll just do it again. Right, let me know. I do like how easy it is to make a lobby, though. I can't read the chat right now, so people talking. Okay, there we go. But after this, we there we go. But after this, I'll be back. If you guys have art questions, <laughs> oh. one of us is catching hands today. Uh oh! See, you're already <laughs> locked in. See so that you're top tier. <laughs> <laughs> I only play a shine. Whatever, dude. Whatever, dude. <laughs> Whatever, dude. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever, dude. Oh, no, dude. Uh. Whatever, dude. Top tier. Alright, I saw you guys playing. I'm joining. <laughs> Is that well? well? I'm done with this after this one. Well, damn it! Well, you can play Mike. Mike's still playing. I'm painting. Yeah, I'll be playing. Yeah. Well, thinks he's tight now because he plays way short. <laughs> and he forgot. He forgot how I started punishing his ass. Oh no! Whatever. He, he got oh, too no. afraid, dude. He got too so afraid. Up, dude, I not, totally not, did the stupidest dude, thing. Stream, Mike. Dude, not on the uh, stream. Uh, you know, everyone's watching you. Just screw it. Everyone's watching you, dude. I have a no <laughs> lag right now. So you must have that good internet. Not now, bro. Your animations are so fast. <clears throat> oh, you got Lux. So, uh, no. uh, <laughs> when y'all gonna let me join the the lobby? We, so far, you only have two people, and but uh, oh, we're just gonna wow. leave after I, after I win this. Right. <laughs> in, in due time, we'll have multiple lobbies. Right. All right, all right. Stop! I want to land on the stage. You can stop. Move. You said stop hitting me. Like you just. <laughs> no, you can't. No. Get out of here. here. It's called the edge guard, man. Come on. Uh, Get out of here. Top tier, dude. Top tier. Get out of here. Top tier. Top tier. Top tier. I can't follow up from that. Top Every tier. other hero I can. <clears throat> nice. Nice. Oh, oh, what's the stock at? The pro the the, the worst tier. part about it is that because of your overlay, you can't see who's who's winning the stock right now. That's all. Oh, that I'm, I'm losing. Wait, who's oh. winning right now? AJ. Two one. Top tier. Yep. Well, oh no, what the? <laughs> oh, I didn't. It's, I didn't it's even, but I'm down eighty-two percent. Oh no. Top Can tier. I bring it back? Oh, oh, AJ said. Oh, oh, oh AJ's dead. He's dead. Oh. An uncharacteristic mistake. Oh, uh, uh. oh, oh! Ooh, the combo. Oh, that was a nice land. Oh. Okay. Ooh, Peace. I'm dead. Oh, uh, one hit, one hit. Top tier. It wasn't a wash. <laughs> Top tier. <laughs> well, you, technically, you would have been Jeez. fine if you didn't commit suicide. <laughs> yeah, that's I right. I think it would have been better on your. Or I, your I, favor. I accidentally like press B and. No, you got scared. Oh, you got nervous. <laughs> you got scared. <laughs> All right, Will. 
My confidence yeah. shook you. It is going back to pain. I'll put a, I'll put the, uh, or you can just join. It's robot right. pencil, and then one. Oh, there was an image comment. People are just probably just watching. D's gaming pad like well, there's, the. Uh, there's free money. I don't know if you saw. Wait, what? <laughs> There's well. You have, rate, free, you have free spectra. Check your upper right hand corner. Oh shit! Yeah, when the match is over, you can get a skin. Razor or... Tartarus for you can work. Buy a Anthony? character or a skin. Yeah, I'll probably get a Afi and Galu. I want to get what? good at, with those. Don't have the Infernal Wish on though. No, I don't have it yet. You can buy that shit. You can buy that right now. It's funny. I'll do it later. Kaylin I want just a wants character. You to, he'll get you a skin. Yeah. Afi and Galu. I don't know that hero. Kaylin, are you watching on Facebook? I'm watching on Twitch. Hey, Anthony, Twitch. what is your opinion on doing free or very cheap work to gain experience for young concept artists? Ooh. My opinion is you shouldn't do free work. Um, yeah. But you know, you'll, you'll see uh, you'll see a lot of people uh, lately have been you know making a lot of you know contra or building up a lot of controversy around contests. <laughs> 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 Can you keep it down at a minimum over there, please? Sorry, dude. All right, I'm trying to like Sorry. stream and do art. There has been a lot of things about contests here. Right? <clears throat> well, like controversy oh, yeah. around it, right? Like contests have been around for a long time, but I guess people are making a big deal these days about all sorts of contests now. It's pretty kind of, I don't know, man. It's like this weird, like people have gotten better at getting mad at stuff. If that makes sense. Like there's like a lot more outraged for all these little things now. And it's, it's kind of getting annoying, but, um, my advice hasn't really changed on this. So I'll, I'll give my advice, uh, which is, you know, whenever people say, you know, like, uh, I'll, like do it for exposure. I think that that's a joke mainly because, uh, the types of people that generally say that may be the ones that can't even give you the kind of exposure that would actually have value. Right. But, but exposure is a real thing. Right, like if, for instance, let me give you an example. Like if you had, uh, I don't know who, who's a popular singer or rapper who would be into concept art. Like Cardi B could probably do something, right? Like she might be like, she needs some badass costumes for me or something like that. <clears throat> you know, if she were to tell me, if Cardi B like were to message me or email me and say like, would you be happy to help me out with this like poster design? Um. I would most likely try to take that chance because the amount of people that she would put that in front of would lead to real work, you know, but the, but the thing is, is typically she would probably still pay me too, right? Cause she would have the money that would be able to pay my wages or my rates, right? I don't see why she wouldn't. And I, I even in that situation, I would ask, I don't think it's rude to ask. Uh, and most yeah, Mark did the stuff for Nicki Minaj. Um, that one thing. Yeah, I mean, like, there's, there's, there's some real power if you get someone that has like the, um, what you call it, if it has the actual ability to give you some exposure. But, but the general rule, general rule is, yeah, you should probably still ask for money, even if it is like Nicki Minaj, right? Uh, even if it's just a little bit of money, right? Like if it's, or not like a little bit, like not like a dollar or something like, but like. For instance, if you were charging like thirty to forty dollars an hour, but you're like, okay, look, I'll do this. Um, like I know this person really well, and they seem really genuine. They're gonna help me out. Like, uh, I can see how that could work out. But yeah, even in the the earlier example of like Cardi B, I, I just can't imagine her not paying you though. Still, but that's the point. Like that exposure still has a lot of value, you know. And, and so there is a, such a thing. So for whatever reason, if that was the circumstances, like it would have to be an exception is all I'm getting at. Right. It would have to truly be an exception. Um, but then like when people think of exposure, uh, in other ways, like contests and stuff, like that's another type of example that I think is pretty valuable because in, in other examples of like people asking for you to do free work. Uh, most likely you can't even share that work until the project's done or you get permission. Like sometimes there'll be contracts that say that you cannot share such work because it's top secret, you know, but in a contest, it's your work almost all the way through. Meaning that whether you do it or not, you can still put it on your website. You can still share it as your own. Right. And so the difference between a contest is that 
you know, it's completely voluntary and it's not a matter of trying to um, exploit artists. Now, I think there could be a case to, against that that I've seen was pretty valuable. Is like if the if they were going to put it into their their game or their project or the movie, um, and they did that at a like larger scale, right? Like almost like fifty percent of their game would be contest submissions. Then there's a strong case that 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 is kind of exploiting the artists, right? But if the game is like ninety nine percent done and they're just going to like put like a poster of your artwork in there as just kind of like a nice charitable way of giving you some accreditation uh, as well as compensate you for that time that you did for the contest uh, for all those who participate in this contest and um, don't win you know it's not a it's not a huge lose because you can still just put your work out there there have been plenty of people who've done contests that i've seen who didn't win the contest but their work was so good they still ended up getting uh, jobs because there's a lot of accountability right that's why people like take my classes for instance they want to have that extra accountability as well as the mentoring right like showing up for class and being told what to do is incredibly valuable uh, especially if you're getting feedback from somebody that you trust will give you the kind of insight that you need um a contest can do that too just excluding the mentoring aspect of it or the the the, the teacher aspect of it because i did, used to do co contests in the past and even just fan art, you know, and it, it like really accelerated my career, especially doing fan art, man. Like it was really <laughs> nice. So, uh, I think that you should never genuinely do free work, right? Even if it like, even if it's like a, a contest or it's like, um, like the, the Cardi B saying, do, do free work for me and giving you real exposure. Um, just because the chances of you winning or or getting an opportunity, whatever, might be a slim. Maybe not with the Cardi B example, because if she explicitly asks you, but that's such a let's not even use that example this is anymore. Such a unique example. Yeah, that's like such a unique because she's Outlier. she's very wealthy. She would be able to pay you. <laughs> like I, I'm trying to think of like a situation where there would be like a really famous person that didn't have money, and it's it's very uh, very unlikely. I mean, there, I guess there's like famous Instagram model modelers. But I don't know. Uh, not well, models, there's <laughs> models. Yeah. Well, you could also think of like an organization. One of the recent examples I saw was Olivia um, shared excuse me, shared something about a logo design contest for Wolfpack, which I love the idea of, and I would support the the brand. But I mean, that's that's pretty messed up. Man. Like, design your own logo, pay somebody, and yeah. throw a contest. Yeah, I think so. I think if it's something that's big, deal. Of that. Yeah, if it's a big deal, maybe there's an, there's an opportunity there that they missed out on, or they didn't, or I'm sorry, they didn't recognize that they should have not taken that chance. So I, I, I agree with that. That makes sense. But like, yeah. um, but I generally say you shouldn't, not because of any kind of ethical or m misleading purposes. I, you can do whatever you want with a lot of your time. I just think it's a better use of your time just to make portfolio pieces to do fan art that will do this almost the same thing, especially if it's really good, you know? And yeah. it's yours, it's on your own time and it's on your own pressure. But some people will do better under like very controlled pressure. Um, but I will say that there's the obvious do not do, which is like the freaking random person that has no credit of any kind asking you to do free work. You should never do that. Cause there's, there's no win in that at all. Not even a little bit. Because even you can argue with the wolf pack that there is some free exposure that you could potentially get, right? Because yeah. they are they are a large organization. That would probably be the better example that I was trying to look for. Cardi B was not mm -hmm. one, um, but even in that situation, I think yeah, still you should you should ask for money. They got money, man. Like they should they should pay you. And so, but I, I get it. Like from you have to think about it from their perspective too. Especially these organizations, they probably just didn't think about it that way. They're probably thinking of it like, oh, you know, we're going to get these people, our fans, to, to potentially help be a part of this, you know? And, um, but as an artist, like, it's really hard to, to make a living just drawing and doing all this stuff. It's, it does kind of feel like a slap in the face, right? I get that. So I, I, I'm not going to debate any further. I think, yeah, it's best just to work on your own time and on your own leisure.
Uh, but yeah, I used to do contests in the past, and the chances of you winning, unless you're incredibly good, was very unlikely. Because um, there are some really good art stuff that they're just going to beat you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, great gameplays. This is fun too. Yeah. Maybe I'll jump back in. Are you still playing Will? Yeah. yeah. I think we're one to one right now. Huh? You guys? Oh, you guys one to one? Yeah. They're both equally weak. Ah, oh, damn it! Top I'm about to dude. win the tiebreak. We'll see. Top yes. tier, dude. Top tier. Top tier. <laughs> There'd be a lot of crap talking right now, but it's just dream. Actually, there, 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 there is like a voice line that you can get. AJ it says that the girl. I'm top tier. <laughs> yeah, toss. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, getting involved is recommended. Hello, AJ. Cheers from Costa Rica. Great stuff in the stream. Thank you. What if your art isn't the best? Wouldn't the exposure be with it? Yeah, I, I guess, like, that's my point. Like, I don't know, man. It's, I generally say, like, again, my general advice has not changed. You should just not do free work because you should just do that for yourself. Unless some sort of like, unless you really like weigh the pros and cons, and you really oh, see no. <laughs> that, <laughs> that that this is gonna be like a real deal, like you're gonna get like some real recognition for this. Um, but but almost in every circumstance that I can think of, like the more I think about it out loud, like the likelihood that they actually have the money to pay you, right? So I just don't think it's a good idea. I think because it's like a, it's a, it's an equity thing, right? You want to, you want to like lead a good example for the rest of artists out there that are working and try to make a living from this. I so think we, we got to stick together. Inter interject there. My, my kind of rule of thumb that I've always kind of had was, um, <clears throat> if it's not going to like help my portfolio or like get me necessarily exposure, it should, it should pay me well. And if it's not gonna pay me well, it should really like be kind of a stepping stone for my portfolio. So like a good example of that would be when I worked on like Dust. Like Dust didn't like necessarily pay me all that well, but it was the experience that I needed to, to get film experience. And so, and the project was cool too. And so I was like, the project's cool. Um, they're, they're a small budget studio, so they don't have a lot of money, but I like the project, I like the people and it's a lot of experience that I can get working in film. So I took the job and then that, the work that I did on that film was what got my attention when I, when I went to Comic-Con with you, AJ, at ILM. Yeah, I remember. I would talk to the ILM people. It's all that stuff and they're like, what's this for? And I was like, oh, it's a film I worked on. And they're like, oh, cool. And then that was what kind of got me, got my foot in the door from talking to them. So I feel like as long as it's kind of like a stepping stone, then I think it's cool. But usually, like, if the project's, like, whack, like, working on, like, Hello Kitty Island Adventure or whatever, they better, like, pay me a lot of money because it's probably not that fun. Whereas working on, like, a small indie project that's really, really cool, hopefully it can lead to something else. So that's kind of the way I, I try to look at it. It's, like, yeah, I think that's a good point. Yeah, I think it's a good one. I think that makes sense. Like, like uh, I hear a lot of, you know, definitely, like, uh, a strong and the strong cases to be honest like against doing free work at all but like you just got to look at it for what it is and i and i think it's really really important to just do your research right and my general rule of thumb is don't do free work because it almost uh most likely just a bad idea uh, but i can imagine that there is some good examples or good reasons uh Kalen gave a good one like he didn't do free work per se but he did cheaper work uh, but he got a outstanding portfolio and he got experience. But he did his research. He re he recognized that they were actually doing something. They weren't just kind of a bunch of yeah. people that had nothing, good. and then they were just trying to get a free something from somebody that actually had skill. Like they already were, they already had a head start. They already had stuff going, you know. Yeah. And their project was actually really really cool. That's what that's what kind of got me hooked on it. Was like, yo, this project was actually really interesting. I think it could really take off. And so, you know, I did some really good work for them, or at least at that time for, at my current skill level. And now those people have kind of become family to me that now whenever like they need concept artwork, they usually come to me first um, and, you know, ask me for stuff. So um, you, have, you have to kind of like, kind of, kind of hedge your bets sometimes about, do you think this company is going to be a company worth kind of investing time into? Because 
you know, it happens. Like, you know, smaller companies that are going to come up and they can't necessarily afford stuff, but they do need content and they, they're going to give you what they have. And the biggest thing for me too was respect. Was that even though they necessarily they weren't paying me a lot, they they respected my time and were always like thankful of what I was, what I was able to give them. And they always like valued my opinion. So like, you know, if, if you're going to like do work that's like, like kind of cheap in my opinion, or like you're not getting paid a lot, you better really enjoy it because it's gonna like no, nothing's worse than like doing work that like you're not getting paid for or like you're getting paid a, like less oh, and yeah. like the project sucks and you don't enjoy it like i enjoy working on that project so like it was cool to me in yeah. that regard so i would say at least try to like enjoy it i think was, yeah i think like with league of legends when they first started out a lot of that was free i think was, or they got like they yeah, paid really low of- um but a lot of those people stuck around Right, some of them stuck around from the very beginning, when they were just barely being able to pay pennies to people. Right, uh, I think Josh was one of them, wasn't he? Like he was around uh, since no, like the very was, early was stages. Like the early stages, but no, they did have some artists that were like working in the garage, like kind of pro bono. Like I, yeah. I really believe in this project, and now they are like, you know. <laughs> yeah, because it happens, right? Like uh, I think the idea of like all anybody that tells you to do free work is trying to scam you i think that's not entirely accurate but yeah but i do think that it does happen more often if i had to like put money on one of those options do free work or not uh, i'd say don't do free work right but uh, i just want people to understand that there are opportunities that may actually be very, really worth your time um but yeah. you have to do your research you just gotta look into it like uh, Mulan, uh, Mulan and his buddy, uh, they they both worked on the thing completely without any payment, and then that led them to like a lot of these really cool deals and stuff like that, you know. Like, but but then again, that that wasn't them like being approached by somebody. They they collaborated together. They told themselves, "We're gonna do this together," you know. And so that's what I'm saying. Like, if you're gonna spend your time on something, it's kind of like to Kalen's point. Yeah, you better love it. You know, so that way you know you're at least if you're not getting paid, you know you're just doing it because you just love it. There's a yeah, guy who really like project, and it's like you're 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 getting paid for doing shit work. Like, why would you want to do that? At that yeah. point, you could just work on your own work, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a there's a kid that was in high school who did like he was trying to remake the whole uh, PT trailer, like the Silent Hill trailer, right? Really? Yeah, and he he almost got it done. He almost finished it. And then, like, you know, Konami is like, sorry, bro, (laughs) you can't be doing that, right? Which is true. Like, legally and technically speaking, that's illegal, right? But most companies, you know, like, they see fan art and fan works like this. They don't, they don't sue them. They just tell them, like, you know, don't pursue it any further, you know? Like, now it's serious. Like, you're about to launch? (laughs) Okay, yeah, you can't do that, right? But then uh, they reached out to him. They're offering him an internship and everything like that. And uh, they even said that he, they installed that his work inspired them to reconsider like the kinds of games that they're making, you know? And, um, like he was really ecstatic about it. So it went from like a fan project to all of a sudden to a potential job career, like right out of high school and some recognition around this project. So, so the exposure is a thing, but like the, the example that I'm bringing up though is like, it was on this kid's terms, you know what I mean? Like, he knew he was doing all of this because of, uh, out of uh, out of love for the project, you know. And so that that's what I think is really useful is just spending your time more for yourself than potentially for somebody else, unless you're getting paid or compensated for that time. Agreed. Anyway, question: Do you think? Uh, wait, do you think it's possible, likely for the entertainment industry to develop labor unions? Uh, the film industry already has one. And do you think, uh, or the film industries, the game industry needs one, though. Do you think that that would be a step in the right direction or hinder progress? Yeah, unions <laughs> is a, unions is a, uh, <laughs> why are you laugh? You, you laughing at the idea of hindering <laughs> no, progress? No, 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 sorry. <laughs> it's the game. It was the game. All right, I was like, what? How dare you, Will? I pulled a nice combo. Well, I was like cussing him out. I hate you, mother. I'm like, wait, I forgot that they're playing. They're like really yeah. into it. Yeah, <laughs> you just hear Will just cuss right randomly. Um, yeah, I, I know that there's a fair argument around like against unions, 
and then like there's an argument for unions like unions are great from what from my understanding right unions are great because it protects people from um from just getting fired like out of nowhere yeah or like being paid really well or um you know not getting shafted you know being protected basically from the company right so the company can't just do whatever the hell they want with you you know so there's a little bit of like a, a, a wall before they can like totally just dismiss you right and unions are really good for that because they can protect the the workers um but then like but the problem is that sometimes unions can go too far, right? So a good example would be like unions uh, within the art, uh, the art department. I think the, it's really incredibly challenging to get into the union, right? Um, you have to go through a lot of hurdles, and and the people who run the union potentially may want to keep it that way, because the best way to protect your your talent is to not let in new talent, you know. Because there's like so many great artists, but it's like if you bring them in, they're gonna take the jobs from the other artists that are already in the union. So it becomes this really big problem because the studios. There's only so many movies that need like crazy concept art, right? And if it was available to every single person um, that had access to like really cool artwork, then you know, yeah, it would be really competitive, just like it is in the game industry. So you see this, you see this like rapid progress in the game industry in terms of like visuals, narrative, because there's a lot more opportunity to hire all sorts of talent from all sorts of places. But then like in the film industry, they have really strong, you know, protections for their employees and really strong protections for the, the, the people who've been there for years. You know, although the technology is changing, they don't necessarily need to, you know? And it, it, it's it's a really hard one, right? Like, how do you protect uh, people from, like, the past, like, people that have, like, past skills from those who are coming in with newer skills? But then how do you prevent um, people who come in with these jobs, too? How do you, or, oh, sorry, not prevent, how do you protect these people as well, right? And I don't have the answer to that, to be honest. <laughs> I just know kind of, like, the conundrum. I get it. I get why it's like kind of a hard one to answer right away, and so I, I just I'll just answer with the simple I don't know, I really don't know what to do about that. Um, but I will say that I'm all about protecting people and I'm all about progress. That's why I'm really torn by this idea. I think it's I think it's possible to have a way to protect people's careers as well as bring in new talent. Because the same thing is happening like with teachers in like schools, right? Like you have a lot of systems in place that uh, allows low talented or low level skilled teachers to hold these positions. And because they're protected by like, you know, teacher unions and stuff, um, it kind of sucks that we can't find ways to, to replace these teachers with, you know, better teachers. But at the same time, we don't want to totally like unleash the lack of protection for the sake of innovation because then just do people's livelihoods right so like the top the top of my head idea would be like you just gotta do tests yearly right to qualify for certain skills that makes way more sense like with like teaching but with like being a good artist that's a lot harder to kind of quantify it's, it's it's sometimes really subjective right but like with something like being like a good math teacher, that can be quantified. We can we can test you and see how well you're doing. How well are your students graduating? Like how well are they understanding the subject matter by the time they graduate or leave your class? We can we can quantify that, you know? And we can be critical and give these teachers fair warning before they get the chap. I can see that. But I don't know if that system's in place or people are even thinking that. I'm not really knowledgeable in that. I just know that the educational system in America specifically isn't the best. And and it, it demonstrates why people get a little up in arms with the, the construct of unions. Anyway, but I don't know. I don't really feel strongly one way or the other. I haven't thought much about it. it hasn't directly affected my life, that's why. Uh, what should be... What should be the minimum... Oh, someone wrote like a long question. Can someone write that question again that they just wrote? 
I can't like scroll this thing up. This like restream chat thing, sometimes it's like really easy for me to like, oh, never mind. Got it. Sometimes I can like change the size of it. Other times I can't. Okay, let's see. Yeah, so Jason, I think I missed this one. What if you're, what, wouldn't the exposure be with it? Oh yeah. If you do free work, you're teaching people who hire that art has no value. Kind of hurts the industry. Yeah. So that's kind of the argument that we were making earlier. Like, I think it's just better to just do uh, work that's for you rather than free work. But but I have seen examples where it's, it's okay to kind of do cheaper work. Uh, but I just wouldn't advocate for it, like, directly. What should be the minimum one should charge living in Los Angeles, Anthony? It all depends where you're living in Los Angeles. But I think like living off of like eighty to ninety thousand dollars a year is, is pretty hard still. Living in some of the places in Los Angeles, like because like rent can be easily for like a two bedroom apartment can easily be above twenty five hundred dollars a month, and then the, the cost of living is incredibly expensive. Meaning like all the little stuff like gas, food, you know, like stuff that you just wouldn't consider being too expensive or a little bit more expensive. Um, question. Do you think artists should listen to a podcast or any music while studying uh, how to improve their craft? It's a habit to listen to something with art, but I feel I should be immersed in it. Yeah, if you're trying to learn, I almost think that you shouldn't. Yeah, I think you should just be focused on what you're trying to learn. Um, like right now, I'm not learning anything. I'm just painting something that I, I paint a lot. I paint a lot of robots, you know, so, so I don't really need to be like really cognitively active. But if you're trying to learn something, yeah, I think you need to be there. You need your brain to be like paying attention. And I know it can probably me or feel boring or feel like a little like, um, tedious but that's just because you know you don't have a lot of uh you don't have a lot of uh practice studying like practice practicing so it's really good to just practice as well like the art of practicing so that way you get the skill up if you're immersed in it the time will go by yeah I if it's really try to feel like the first hour of a painting i'll usually not have anything on because that's like probably the most the hardest part so then i really kind of like take my time I don't have anything on, I turn my phone off, or I put it on Do Not Disturb, and then I just kind of go at it, and then once I'm kind of in a better place, then I can kind of put on a podcast and be like, okay, I can I can now kind of turn off my brain and kind of just go into, like, you know, touching things up. <clears throat> yeah, I think if you don't have enough uh, of, like, the, the fundamental skills, for sure, you definitely need to stay focused. But like, for instance, uh, if, if you were to paint a cloud, Kayla, I don't think you would need <laughs> to like really think about it because you, you paint clouds all the time. It's like just second nature to you. But if it's like a, a new design challenge that you're given at work, yeah, I can understand that. That makes sense to me. So it's like whenever you're doing something that you just don't have a lot of skill and knowledge in, and you should know what that is. And if you don't, uh, you'll be, you'll be uh, told why you can't do that immediately when you realize your art is garbage. <laughs> okay and so that just means you just need to pay more attention when you're practicing you need to be paying more attention while you're designing um like whenever i'm programming like i can almost never i have to always because with programming it's not like art necessarily because programming is just constant problem solving i'm given a problem and then i just have to figure it out and i have to like literally think because i'm used to listening to podcasts or putting youtube videos on whenever i'm working uh, so it's really it was a weird thing like to have that like oh my gosh like I have to do this all the time I have to like always be awake and so that's something really interesting that uh, I wasn't used to but you know it makes sense though because it's like really taxing on on a cognitive level but anyway I recommend like having like a certain time uh, where you don't where you kind of just disconnect so like I kind of have some certain times at work where like I'll try to let people know, like, from this hour to this hour, like, if you have to get, if you have to talk to me, just wait. Like, if it's an email, if it's whatever, just like, just like, don't talk to me for that, from like these, like, for these hours, so I can get a lot of work done. So sometimes it's giving yourself like a set time where you just say like, all right, from the hours of like two to three, no TV, no music, no nothing. I'm turning my phone on, do not disturb. I'm turning on TV. 
Like from these hours, if you unless like you're dying, like do not talk to me. And then you'll you'll probably see how like productive you can be actually um, when you kind of eliminate everything. Yeah, I don't have my social media or anything. I, I usually put my phone on the floor whenever I'm working. Yeah. Cause... Like even you do it. Like when we were talking about like icons last day, you were like, all right, guys, I'll see you later. <laughs> and I'm like, where's AJ? I'm like, his notifications aren't turned off. I can tell if you can. No, I actually sometimes don't turn them off. I just, um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, to your point, that's exactly what I do. I don't turn it off like the alert directly. I just put it on the floor <laughs> next to my feet and I just turn uh, my volume all the way down. So I know it's like vibrating, but I'm like, I just ignore it. Uh, and I only answer it if someone calls me, right? Uh, very rarely will someone text me if it's an emergency. <laughs> it's kind of inappropriate if it's an emergency, right? Yeah. Um, they send you a, they send you a, a, a gift. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, like um, today, Julian like busted his head. He fell really, really badly and hit his head on the cabinet. Like it was yeah. really busted. Um, and I was freaking out. And so I called Bea, you know, and because I wasn't sure if we had to take him to get stitches or just fix it ourselves. But uh, yeah, it's pretty bad, but it, it, it went away pretty quickly. So we realized we could probably just um, use that like bandage glue type stuff to kind of put the wind together and we'll just keep an eye on it. But um, yeah, like I called her like right away. And I called her repeatedly until she answered. And so, uh, yeah, so I, I, that's how I feel. Like, there's no news that I feel <laughs> that I need to know via Facebook, right? Um, exactly. That I can't wait, like, an hour to check. Right, like, I, today I was working a lot. I was catching up on some stuff. And then uh, and then I checked my phone, and I see just all this stuff about Trump and Russia. And I'm like, oh, man, what happened today? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's nothing new. And so, um, but like, uh, but I didn't know. I just was kind of like just stayed off of it. And so I think a lot of people, like you have to realize that statistically speaking, uh, you are amongst the types of people who would spend like about, what is it, like five, like every five to six minutes you'll check your phone. Like this is including myself, right? And so I, I, like, I actively just will tell myself to stop doing that. You know, like I just know that it's like so wired into us to just constantly check our our devices, right? Check our social need, uh, networks. That I, I constantly make a real effort to just avoid these problems because it, it it slows down um, my growth. Right, and I don't like that. And so you just got to be aware that this is true. Don't, don't be the kind of person, uh, or don't don't fall into this trap of saying, "Well, that's not me. Like, I don't. I am totally um, in control <laughs> of my social network." Okay, because if you're not, and you have that mentality, that's incredibly dangerous. And I and I'm telling you this as a teacher too, because I I teach a lot of people. And I, I, they always tell me they have no time, right? And then I said, okay, let's walk through it. Let's figure it out. Then where is that time going? And then sure enough, they almost always have four or five hours extra, like in a day, that they can't account for. And then that's when I usually bring up, well, like, have you ever considered that you are just like watching YouTube videos for 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, 10 minutes here, you know, that adds up. That adds up to hours. Uh, you're on Facebook here, you know, you're, you're ranting there. That, that all adds up, dude, you know? And, uh, if you just, just admit that that's true, you're more likely to be able to fix it. Right? I think like Mark Twain had a quote of, you know, something along the lines of, um, you know, it's better to be ignorant and admit that you don't know, right? It's better to be like wrong or right and admit that you don't know than it is to be uh, wrong but think that you're right and essentially what he was getting at is like if you really believe something is true and you're actually wrong that's incredibly dangerous because you basically you basically put yourself in a mind trap you know and 
uh, is, is really dangerous, especially in terms of your progress as an artist. So just to, just admit that that's probably true about yourself, that you're wasting your time in places that you shouldn't. There's like really good apps that prove this to you too. Like they pay attention to your behavior. And, and you know, the minimum an app like that will do will make you pay attention to, to your behavior right? because you're paying attention to the apps paying attention to your behavior, you know? And you're like, oh my gosh, I am, I really do want to check my Facebook right now. <laughs> but I know the app's watching me, you know? And so, um, yeah, you'll just know, like, everyone's given the same amount of time. Just some people find ways to really uh, optimize it. You know, I know people who are like actually really busy. They have like two jobs, they have kids, um, uh, they have like hobbies on the side, and they still find time to like work on like personal work. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think the only people that I would say have like a real excuse are the kinds of people that like literally are like running for their lives. You know? Um, if you really like, if you, you have something that's really imminent that you can't, if you, if you avoid or if you spend your time elsewhere, you may potentially, you know, ruin your life or get you killed in some way, then yeah, of course, handle that first, dude. I always use, I always use McGowan as like that, that, uh, that, um, example of like, if you can have like two kids and work like a full-time job to like, you know sell things that sell sell cars to support your two kids and your wife like and like and go to school you know what i mean like like you can like he didn't have time and he somehow made time like it, it requires like a lot of like extenuating circumstances for, for, for me to believe someone to say like like there's no time in the day yeah usually yeah, usually the people that I that will say this to me are in a circumstance that proves to me that they might actually have more time than they're, they're admitting to, right? Like if you are in a school setting, like you had enough money to spend on the class, that means you are part of like a, a larger group of people that have access to this type of stuff. If you had the time to be here in my class, it means that you felt that you had time to use for this class, you know? And so... It, it proves to me that you might actually be lying to yourself, right? And it's, uh, it's the, even it's even the playing field because when you say you don't have time, it's the excuse that like if I did have time, I was good. And so a lot of people sometimes, myself included, you know, you don't want to admit that if the playing field was still was level, that you still might not be good. You yeah. Know? And so it's like that makes sense. You to go, me. oh well, the playing field is not level, so that's why. I'm and it's like well it's never going to be level so you need to just kind of do it and so i think that's what it is too is like people don't want the playing field to be level because then that way if they don't succeed it's like oh well you know the playing field wasn't level that's why that kind of stuff yeah like i know um how to program now right and like people would ask like how did you learn how to program and i said i just spent like you know an hour to two hours every day minimum uh, learning how to program and now I know I'm like a, a good programmer I'm not a great one um, but I am good enough that I feel confident that I can make almost any certain kind of game that I'd like to make I don't feel like I can't I think I have enough knowledge to and so yeah that's kind of where where it's at with me all right let me see how to build confidence in yourself as an artist um, you know that's a good question and for me it's 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 a simple answer it's just hard to hear which is um you shouldn't trust on that right you shouldn't trust that you're going to build confidence you should just trust that you're going to be good one day right and then that confidence will come when you start to demonstrate that quality of work right but if you're like, if you're waiting for that moment that you feel like confident and you want to, you're looking into that way to like build your confidence, I think you can do that today. I think you could say to yourself, I'm only as good as how much time I've put into my work. And that's how I should feel about it. Like the fact that I suck today has nothing to do with how I'm going to be later. Like me being a very self defeating already is kind of, um, it's kind of pointless. Like, it doesn't do anything for me. Feeling bad about my work 
doesn't help me. Uh, it usually prevents me from doing more, right? So that's why I say like kind of avoid the, 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 the idea of confidence. Like, like I, for instance, was incredibly confident all the time. Um, and then whenever I would show my work to somebody and they'd be like, oh yeah, your work sucks. I'd be like, oh, good point. And then I'd go back and like work on it. But then again, come back with like strong confidence. Like, yeah, I'm really good. And then somebody would be like, no, no, no. Like you suck. And I'm like, oh yeah, you're right. Good point. And then I'll keep going. And then now people, less and less people say that I suck, <laughs> you know? But I, my attitude has always been the same. It's always just been like, yeah, just gotta just keep painting then. You know, I guess it's not good enough. I just gotta keep going. Uh, and I know artists who are extremely better than me, like objectively, I believe are like better than me. Uh, and they're really self deprecating. They're really like, sh like shit on themselves all the time. But yet they're still really good. So their lack of confidence didn't prevent them from continuously painting. Does that make sense? And so that's why I'm saying like, you shouldn't rely on that because if, if you're overly confident, um, you, can, you can easily become arrogant, right? And if you're really lacking in confidence, you can just stop altogether. But if you just kind of ignore how you feel, like if you feel really confident, um, but then you're not afraid of like getting criticism, um, then you'll progress that way naturally because you just, people will tell you something and then you're like, oh yeah, it's, I see what you're saying. Like, okay, yeah, my forms are garbage. You're right. And then you just work on it, right? Um, and then vice versa, someone would say your forms are garbage. And you'd be like, I already know they're garbage, you know? Um, but you know what? I'm going to work on them. See, the, even though that person's attitude was low on confidence, and my attitude, for instance, was high in confidence, one thing was consistent between the two of us, which was that we never stopped painting. And that is, that is truly the the best equalizer in the circumstance right so uh, i would denzel say <laughs> yeah be denzel washington i would say like yeah just because uh and caitlin has a really like whenever we do talks together like he he does a, one of my favorite things in a talk he talks about how he had that self-defeating attitude and he he woke up to it he realized it meant, it meant nothing like it's just it's it's pointless like nobody nobody's gonna like help him get to where he needs to be and he talks about it and it's great. It's really inspiring. Um, and it's one of the reasons why I like going and do talks with him because on my side, I'm just about like, just like I was always there, like always at 10 and, and running at a full speed, you know, but Kalen, uh, his story is different. He's like, he wasn't at that point. And then he learned that it, it was important to be that, uh, not necessarily like always confident, but he, he learned that it was important to just do work. And I love it because it's a good contrast because not everybody is like me. Not everybody might just feel really confident and not everybody's like Kalen, for instance, who may uh, find reasons to not be confident, you know? But the thing that both Kalen and I did uh, ultimately was just paint a lot and work towards what we really wanted to do. And so I think it's really important to divide like confidence from that. I think it's important to divide like inspiration and motivation from this idea. Like, because sometimes people say, how do you stay motivated? And I, I had a video and I talked about this, but then I realized I changed my mind on this because motivation is also very fickle because there's going to be days where you don't feel motivated and you don't feel inspired. And that's kind of how, that's what you separates the winners from the losers, right? Because the winners won't sit there and say to themselves, well, I don't feel motivated today, so I guess I won't do it. They'll just do it anyway. And, and that's the kind of the point. Like, And I think I remember Mike once said, there's a better word for, like discipline is a better word is what you should rather strive for like discipline because discipline means uh, regardless of how you feel you just do it and uh, and if you look at it like on the outsider looking in you'll notice that almost anybody that's great pretty much follows this system which is whatever that they wanted to do they just do it and many of my students have done this they follow this advice uh, keenly and they are doing great you know and a lot of people who are always trying to find ways out, uh, I'm really good at un unraveling that, you know? In fact, that's one of the kind of the biggest selling points of my mentorships usually was whenever people promote my classes, they said like, I have, I have a really good way of finding like what your reasons are and showing, showing you how wrong you are. And uh, because a lot of people have different circumstances 
and I've taught thousands of different people and they're all almost very similar to one another, the, the kinds of criticisms that they give to themselves. And so just think about it, man. Just be honest with yourself. Like, um, nobody's going to do the work for you, right? And when you submit your portfolio to a client, they're not going to look at your portfolio and then also ask, but what were all the struggles in your life? Can you tell us all your struggles? So that way we can like put that with your work, <laughs> you know? They're not going to do that. It's not going to happen, you know? And so it's really important that you guys recognize these types of things because um, uh, it'll, it'll get you past these types of ideas and this type of mentality faster. It'll get you past it. Because, uh, yeah, because a lot of things will get in your way. Uh, but the biggest one is usually the way you, you think about it. And if someone asks something like this on Instagram and I answered it pretty much like you only have control of three things anyway, which is that your attitude, uh, your artwork and the people that you know, your network, right? That's the only things that you have control over, right? They taught that in my college. What? Uh, I said they taught that in my college. Did so, they yeah. teach that? Yeah, they did. Oh, well, that's good. That's good advice. They owe us money. <laughs> <laughs> and so, it's so, and it's really true because there's nothing else you can do. Like you can't control whether a company is willing to hire you. You can't control whether uh, a company has a, the time to hire you or if they have enough room to hire you. Um, you can't control these circumstances, but what you can control is like your work, your attitude and the people, you know, and that will increase your chances. That's all it does. It just increases your chances of employment and recognition. I mean, just the other day, you know, um, I was reached out by uh, a studio to work on a certain project. You had to turn it down, um, but but it was because like a, someone mentioned me in like a meeting, you know. And so it's like like that happens more often than not when you have friends, right? Uh, I saw like a Marco Neller on his Instagram when people were asking like how he got to work on Black Panther and, and he's like I just talked to this guy and he pointed out to one of our friends Philip and and I'm sure that's what happened Philip's a good guy I'm sure he was just like oh yeah you should get Marco Neller to work on this with us and if, uh, Philip if you're listening to this I feel betrayed you should have brought me out to the project too no, how, dare put him in the movie. how dare you <laughs> um, but but yeah, it's it's just how it works, man. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna get going. Um, one last game, bro. One last game. Spending our time in our own project should our original idea, especially strongly written concept, should be exposed publicly. Yeah, I think more or not or more more or less like people should share the kinds of work that they're doing because it just. It helps you keep accountable and there is a new kind of culture around building like a, a, a game in front of people like a project or an idea in front of people and publicly because then it's like yours but then there's also the danger of like people exploiting that and taking it for themselves I mean, it happens but i think if you have enough uh, like i have a, i have friends who've done this and they were exploited but then they had enough evidence to kind of like really take it to court so um, so there, there's some value in actually having it out into the public, especially if you put it on places that have copyright within their actual platform that they copyright for you because it's like internet dated. It counts in court these days. So keep that in mind. But people will jack it. That's almost certain. All right. I'll play one more game and then I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> Who's uh? play will is will still playing yep. yeah we're playing right. me and mike are playing <laughs> you're playing the whole game he didn't listen to a damn word i heard it i had the stuff <laughs> he's like what i can relate no, to the beating will is brainless anyway oh damn <laughs> I'm just hold on hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> dang, <dude. laughs> hold on hold on the only one like two like, out of like Get on. i believe the, the, the count is minutes. like seven out of two maybe yeah, whatever it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't take that shit. I just it. bought a new hero and I gotta learn him. And I'm getting my, I'm getting Rex right now. Uh -huh. I'm not even like going crazy on you because I know it's like Ooh. a new character and all. Oh, this. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. Dude, this you know, um, someone asked about high school. Let me. Uh... 
Yeah, actually, I don't know about the. I think they do. I think, and, and if it's not like a direct uh, copyright, it's a loose copyright. Like you can still, even if it, it isn't like documented, you can actually, if there's enough evidence that nobody can like pack it out. But like, for instance, someone stole my work on ArtStation and put it on ArtStation. And then I said, hey, take that down. And I reported it to ArtStation. I, I, did, I followed through their, their, um, their um, process and they shut that place down immediately. And Is so, that call me out? Hold on. And as someone who graduated from high school, uh, nowhere near professional level, how would you recommend I go about getting to that level where my art is worth money? Um, just compare it to people that you admire. It needs to get closer to that, and that's when you can start making some money. And the best way to do that, uh, on the on the easiest the easiest way I could say that, so I can move on to the next question, is um, spend a lot of time uh, studying and working. Oh, I did it. Anthony, I read your art station blog post. Foresight last month has been a mindset you've had most of your career. Yeah, most of it for sure. But it is definitely one I didn't have my whole career. I, I think I started learning it in the last four or five years. Uh, hello, Anthony. Regarding the spending in our time in our own project, I uh, they already answered that one. Consider what this is when an artist is lack of exposure and fear that their ideas. Yeah, I kind of already talked about that. Uh, I can relate to that concept. I used to be like that. Then I shared my work, my comic, for free, got feedback, and it kept me motivated. No one wanted to steal. It wasn't worth stealing. <laughs> yeah, that's true, too. Maybe you, you might not. You might be a little <laughs> too... too uh, uh, you might have too much praise for your own work. You might not have work people want. <laughs> that's definitely true. But there is some value. Like, yeah, you get feedback. Feedback is something that you... If you keep to yourself... Unless you're like some sort of genius, which is very unlikely. And I'm not trying to insult you. Uh, I'm saying that about myself as well. Uh, like very few people reach or like succeed at that level where they just put something out for the first time without any feedback and then just really explode. And those are great stories to hear because they're really motivating in, in the sense that like it's possible. But the likelihood is, is really low. So it's probably best that you get feedback as soon as you can. Found you through modern day James. He speaks highly of you, uh, and I see why. Love your work. Oh, right on. Also, great story you have on you. Uh, you started drawing it. Inspired me. Got it. All right, let's play a little bit of icons. What's going on here? Where's Will? Am I playing against Will? Not yet. I'm kicking oh, like that at the moment. Oh. No, we're even right now. I got a new hero, man. Just jump off the cliff. Let me play him. Raymer's annoying. Just, jump off the just keep jumping off. Just let me play. I don't have time to wait for you guys' bickering. Oh my god. Alright. <laughs> now he's going hard mode. <laughs> Will's going hard mode now? But I'm still winning. What's up? I got two portal packs. What's this about? So I get skins and stuff. Oh, ooh, look at all this. Okay. Oh, a lot of damage. What the heck? Damn, I was already high though, too. Cool, I got a new skin, but I don't think I have that character. Destiny? No, oh. if you, if you, you'll get the skin, but then if you don't have the character, you can't get the character. So. <laughs> get out of here, Mike! Oh, try to tease me. Oh. Here, I'll go back to painting until you're you all ready. <laughs> so I like Raymer, man. I'm getting used to this. Uh, I'm just, I told you he does, the, he does the voice line. Yeah, I've been spamming the voice line. Dude, yeah. Raymer, Raymer is a bit. I hate him. <laughs> Raymer and Kid, I think. I barely even know how to play him. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm causing dude, trouble. The voice, of, the voice of Raymer, dude. It's it's Spike. It's Spike Spiegel. It's so good. <laughs> I've never. I'm kind of jealous. I didn't get to like like meet him or like go to the studio session. I would Are there gonna be? Are you guys setting up a match? What's going on here? Yeah, I'll create it. Yeah, Will's gotta make it. I can't spectate. Alright, get in there, AJ. What, what is it called? It's right. a robot I'm just gonna pencil. guess. <laughs> then... <laughs> well, I, I thought mind. you knew from like earlier. Uh, robot I, I didn't know you, you were gonna use okay. the same one. There you go. I can't assume, dude. <laughs> just come that, on in, that, dude. Just join my... Just type in a name and see what happens. Yeah, you know, just guess, just guess. Guess the password. Oh, dude, top tier, dude. He's already selected his character. Who painted this garbage background? Well, do you <laughs> <laughs> oh, you kid too! Damn it! I hate this fucker. 
If Will if Will loses, guys, go on his Facebook and just tell him it's okay. Oh no! Whatever, Will. I know your ways. He knows our, he knows the ways from the old. Days. Fool. Oh no! You're so big. Top tier. The way that you beat Will is just block. <laughs> if you block that move, it's like a super long recovery. And Will's screwed. Oh, that should have hit you. Will's calculated. Oh! Peace! No! Sucker. I'm too fat! Sucker. You fool! No, that was smart! You fool! You smart! Oh no! Oh, you about to lose again? Oh no! Top tier. Top tier. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, you guys should just get my voice over and I'll say that. Okay. <laughs> it's in. I'll do it for exposure. <laughs> <laughs> Deal. <laughs> just just put robotpencil.net on the bottom of the screen every time I say it. That's it. Oh no! Why did this Johnny sound like a, like a man? Oh no! Oh no, that's smart! Oh no, that's smarter! Damn! Fucking kid does so much damage. No, I do so much damage. Oh, oh, my reach isn't... Oh, what? That's right, it's like Smash. I should have known better. Oh, what? what? The? You Damn it! You I didn't fool. grab the ledge. That's right. Ooh. 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 Ooh! Oh! Snap! The skills are real! Top tier! Top tier! Top tier! No! Get body. Damn get it! Body, well. Top, Top tier. Body. I got body! <laughs> Top get tier. Body. That's I got it. body That's all you hard. Get. No rematch. <laughs> no rematch? <laughs> just no rematch? Away. Damn it! Oh <laughs> uh, shit, he said no rematch. You gotta hold that. Yep, you gotta eat you it. You should've gone to Will's Facebook Dang. and write a hold that. Uh, all right. <laughs> hold that. That's gonna hurt. All right. right it was fun that. playing that. I'll play you guys later. Um, all right. Thank you guys for hanging out. In this <laughs> super Dude, dungeon, bro. I got the one. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> you fighting both of us? <laughs> it's all right. You guys can play top tier league. Let me know when you guys get to platinum league, though. Damn. That's where, that's where I live. Damn. I'll be, I'll be there. Don't worry about it. I think AJ got the cheat codes. <laughs> Let me know when you guys have a duck hunt. Uh, like character, <laughs> and then it's GG, dude. Cans, cans, and frisbees. Let's, let me know when you guys get that in the game. All right, Damn. guys. Um, thanks for everybody who's joining the stream. Hope you guys enjoyed <laughs> the the embodiment, the embodiment uh. called Robot Pencil. <laughs> I got wrecked. Yeah, right, yeah, you did. Yeah. You did. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Later, everyone in the stream. Thanks for hanging out. Peace with out, me. people. All right.